Good evening. God bless you. Good evening, everyone, to each and every one of you. Amen. What a blessing to come before you one more time. Amen. For our midweek empowerment, a Bible study. Amen. To get that second wind, that spiritual boost to carry us to the end of the week. Amen. Pray that you had a a blessed day today, amen, that not only were you blessed, but you were a blessing to somebody else, amen. Sometimes we get so focused up on ourselves, we forget that there's somebody out there that needs a word, they need encouragement, they need a smile and a hug, amen, and that's what we do, amen, as born-again believers, amen. We uh, reach out to help people uh, in their time of need. And some don't even understand why are you being so kind to me? Why are you being so nice? It's because of the nature of Christ living on the inside. And so we're grateful that for God allowing us to be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. Did you have a blessed day today? Come on, somebody, as you log in, call your friends, call family members. Amen. Tell them your church is online, live stream, and we thank God for it. Amen. Just uh, give me folks time to sign in, and amen. Then we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, we had a glorious time Sunday. Amen. Still rejoicing. I'll say more about that a little bit later, but... My goodness, amen. Overcomers in Christ, that's the place to be in Christ, amen. Overcoming, amen, in Christ because we win. We already have the victory, amen. And so, good evening, good evening. Oh, I see family and friends, all of our live stream members and supporters. We thank God for you. First time visitors logging on. We thank God for you, amen, your uh, answer to our prayers. And we are honored and blessed that you have joined us tonight for our midweek empowerment Bible study. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory. We give you all, all the honor because you're worthy and because you are God. You are good God, a loving, caring, sharing, heavenly Father. Father, we come before you, O oh God. God, we come hungry and thirsting after your righteousness. And Father, your word says we shall be filled. God, give us understanding. Open our hearts, our minds to receive your word. Father, those that are, had a rough day, those that went through some trials and tribulations today, Father, we lift them up before you tonight. Those that are going through in Hawaii have lost their homes and family members. Those have gone through uh, some trying times in California. I think it's the flooding. Father, we are praying for each and every home, each and every person that has been affected. God, you know how to minister to each and every need. Father, I pray that they will find the right places, right people to uh, get in touch with God so that they can start the re restoring healing process. Oh God, like only you can. Father, we're praying tonight, God, as we are ready listeners with prepared hearts that you will speak a word that will transform our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. Ah, oh, hallelujah. And so we thank God for his word. All right. So every Saturday, amen, we have our intercessory prayer at 10 o'clock. Amen. And this Saturday, this Saturday is, the next Saturday is September the 3rd. Amen. Third, yeah, third of September. I was <laughs> right in front of me. I'm sorry. At 10 a.m. Amen. We're not going to have our regular uh, intercessory prayer. We're going to have brother to brother uh, men's fellowship. Brother to brother. Amen. I'm expecting the brothers to come out, bring a friend at 10 a.m. on the third of September. We'll come and we'll. Uh, We'll fellowship, we'll have fun, and we'll have the Word of God. 
amen, encouraging our brothers and the Lord. Because if there ever was a time we need to be encouraged and encouraging one another, the time is now. So mark that on your calendar, Saturday, September 3rd, the Brother to Brother Fellowship, Men's Fellowship. Amen. All right, Sunday, September 10th, we'll have uh, online only. Amen. Uh, we'll have share the live stream from uh, our uh, CCI leaders that lead conference in Killeen, Texas. We'll be down there, Lord's will, sharing with our, our sisters and brothers in Christ from all over the United States. Amen. It is an awesome time to see the love. It seems like it's a family reunion every time we get together and at our overseers church, Pastor Valerie at the Christian House of Prayer. Amen. Looking for a high time in the Lord. And if you're not able to make it, we certainly solicit your prayers because it's going to be a time of refreshing, of, of reviving. Amen. So that when we leave that place, we'll be filled and going back to our uh, individual churches to share what was poured into us. All right. That's Sunday. September 10th. Our August outreach, we're still uh, accepting donations toward uh, uh, reliable transportation for a family in need. Uh, check out our Facebook, our Instagram, amen, for the ways to give unto that uh, situation, that outreach. Amen. We all have at some point in time fallen on hard times or at times of need and it's nothing more uh, uh, blessing, blessed to be able to help somebody in their time of need. Amen. And that's what we are doing. Uh, just being a blessing, serving other people. That's uh, our August outreach, and we'll have all the way to August 31st, amen, to give. September 16th, we will have uh, baptisms, amen. We will have our, our second uh, baptism at o o Overcomers in Christ, amen. And if you want to get baptized, you in the local area, come out and see us. Give us your name so we can uh, put you on our list and get you some classes, and we'll just go ahead and baptize in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's September 16th. Amen. Uh, contact uh, Pastor Siobhan if you would like to be baptized. Amen. All right. Well, we thank God for it. Amen. Guess what? It is offering time. Hallelujah. Amen. A time to give unto the Lord what he has blessed us with. Ways to give, amen. Amen. We give Zale, uh, uh, overcome, O-I-C-M, pastor at gmail.com. Amen. And amen. All right. Amen. All right. Uh, just look at the screen. It's uh, uh, listed below. Text the word give. Amen. And put your dollar amount up and it'll, it'll take it from there. Amen. And so we thank God for all the ways to give. Feel free to give as the Lord leads on your heart. We've had some and we got some testimonies yet to come that you haven't heard of what God is doing and has done in some of our sisters and brothers life. Amen. God is faithful to his word when he says Give and uh, it shall be measured. It shall be pressed down, running over. Shall men give? Oh my God, Amen. His word is true, and the the most important thing it says it shall not return void. It will accomplish. And so uh, the old folks used to tell us, you can't beat God giving, no matter how hard you try. So if you have a seed, go ahead and, and sow it tonight. Uh, we are thankful and appreciate every seed, every seed offering that is given in love in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, oh God, for all those who have given, those who have a mind to give and didn't have it tangibly, oh God. Father, we know you are 
uh, our supplier. God, you're the source. And Father, we call on you tonight that meet every need, oh God, as we submit ourselves to you, as we submit our seed by faith, knowing that, oh God, you are our everything. And Father, we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you for giving. Amen. Checks in the mail. Hallelujah. Money orders. Oh, <laughs> amen. amen. We appreciate you and the heart that you have to support Overcomers in Christ Ministries. Now we're going to do the canopy of God's protection, Psalm 91. Amen. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample on your feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 91. We, we had a glorious time. Amen. At our back to school intercessory prayer for our students and teachers, everybody associated with the uh, educational uh, institute from the bus drivers crossing guards principals everybody we covered them all amen because if our any time uh, like now our our kids that's what I'm trying to say need to be covered in the blood and in prayer now, amen hallelujah and so we covered our children amen and amen. your children in school whether it's from nursery to grad school, amen. We plead the blood over their lives. Amen. Are you ready for Bible study? Mm -hmm. Amen. Sunday we had the I Love My Church Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all showed up and showed out. It was such a blessing to hear uh, the testimonies of why and uh, what people feel about their church, amen, the saints, amen. It's so important because there ought to be some something on the inside. I love my church. Why do I keep coming back, amen? And so uh, we were able to experience just a portion of that Sunday, hallelujah, allowing God to, to speak through you. Uh, and, and we had not only that, we had the t-shirts, the t-shirts, oh, it, it was beautiful, it showed unity, amen, and so don't get rid of that t-shirt, hold on, and it's still, if you still want one, still let us know, hallelujah, and we appreciate you, and me and Pastor Pat for how you just spoke kind words, amen, because it's not about us, it's all about him. Amen. And so we do appreciate those who God have uh, anointed and appointed for such a time as this. All right. Open your Bibles, if you would, to St. John, the 15th chapter. Amen. St. John 15. We're going to read two verses uh, in your hearing. 
Hallelujah. Dude, we're going to read two or three. Amen. I'll read it from the Living Bible, but any, any version you have will work. It's the Word of God. In St. John, the 15th chapter, we're going to start at verse 9. And the living, the living Bible says it like this. <clears throat> I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Live within my love. Verse 10, when you obey me, you are living in my love. Just as I obey my Father and live in his love. Amen. We are... Uh, We've been sharing with you for the uh, last several weeks the five secrets of living. Yes, the five secrets of living in that base scripture uh, from this, these uh, lessons is from St. John 15 and 5. Amen. It says, and Jesus was talking to his disciples. He says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same uh, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Hallelujah. And I pray that uh, what we have shared has been a blessing that you can see. I got to be connected to Jesus Christ. And so the five secrets of living uh, we've been sharing. And so we did the first one. The secret of living uh, to living is what? Fruit bearing. Amen. And next we studied the secret of a fruit bearing is abiding. Amen. And after that, we share the secret of abiding is obeying. All right. Somebody's been listening. Amen. And so tonight, we're going to share with you. But before we get started, you know there is a quiz. There is a Bible study review. You thought I forgot, didn't you? Amen. All right, well, it's going to be short, but we're going to get right into it. All right, you got your notes and your pads and pencil. All right, so let's get started. What is the primary responsibility of the branch? Look through your notes real quick. What is the primary responsibility of the branch? We, we taught this. We shared with you. We are the branches. What is our responsibility? All right. All right. Well, let's let's see if we got any uh, anybody answering. All right. The responsibility of the branch is to bear fruit. Did anybody get that right? Tanika. All right, Sister Samuel, praise the Lord. Hey, man. All right, I'm excited. Let's go to uh, number two, true or false. You got a 50-50 uh, <laughs> chance of getting this right. The fruit of the Spirit should be manufactured by every believer. Is that true or is it false? The fruit of the Spirit should be manufactured by every believer. Is that true or is that false? Oh. All right. I see an answer. Praise God. All right. That answer is false. It should not be manufactured. <laughs> Amen. Let alone from every believer. All right. Well, let's go. Amen, sister. Uh, I see a couple got it. All right. All right. Let's define. Number three. Let's define the word abide. We shared this. Look at your notes real quick. What does the word abide mean when we're talking about uh, abide in me and I in you? How did we define the word? Amen. Abide. Oh, yes. Come on, scholars. You got to pass the class. <laughs> Amen. 
How would you? All right, Sister Shayla is typing fast, y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. got to come on now. Amen. That word abide. And I know y'all are still typing. Keep typing. Uh, mm -hmm. All answers are accepted. Amen. That word abiding. Amen. It's to, to uh, remain, uh, to dwell in, to remain steadfast, faithful, uh, to continue, to have one's abode. All right. Yes. Yes. Live with. Come on, y'all. Amen. I'm about to have church already. Amen. So, so since you know that, so what is the secret of abiding? The secret. What is the secret of abiding? I just shared that with you if you were listening. What is the secret of abiding? Oh, yeah. You got to be quick tonight. Come on. Wake yeah. up. <laughs> the secret of abiding. All right, is obeying. Ah, oh, Sister Shayla, she's trying to stay at the top, y'all. She loses. <laughs> Amen. Here's another one. You got a uh, 50-50 uh, chance of getting it right. <laughs> True or false, we obey God through his word. Y'all, everybody should be typing right now. We obey God. Amen. Through his word, true or false? Is that true or false? All right, that is true. Yes, yes. All right, and we say, well, pass down how many questions? Just keep answering. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, here's an easy one again. What is the secret of living? Check your answers. Oh, look at y'all. Y'all are answering. Praise <laughs> God. What is the secret of living? I said it. I said it already. I said the answer early. You have to be listening. The secret of living is, the secret to living is... Uh, Sister Siobhan got that one. Now, I don't know if she typed it in yet, but she said fruit bearing. Amen. The secret to living, of living, is fruit bearing. All right. Good. Everybody still ahead to class? All right. All right. Sister Chevelle, I see you. Uh, I see my sister-in-law. All right. Here we go. Who said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Who said that? It's in the Bible. Who said it? Amen. Who said, upon this rock, I will build my church? All right. I, I'm hearing answers. Yes, type it. Type it in. <laughs> Jesus said it. <laughs> All right, we, we we get down to the, oh, you got to get this one. <laughs> According to the word, I don't know, we might have some hangups right here. According to the word, we heard it Sunday. What is the church? What is the church? What is the church? We, If you were listening Sunday, it still should be in your spirit. <laughs> what is the church? God bless you, Sister Jackie. Ah, uh, what is the church? Ah, oh, Sister Shayla, I, I don't know if she had got my answers or not. <laughs> she is on point tonight. Jeez. The church is us, the people. We are the church. Uh, we are the church. Yes, the saints of God. Oh, I got some Bible scholars tonight. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's see. Oh, let's see if you get this one. According to the word of God, how will the world recognize us as disciples? Woo! Let me say it again for the other folk. How will the world recognize us as God's disciples? Uh, if you were there Sunday, you heard it. Uh, by our love, St. John 13 and 35. And you will know. Let's just read it. <laughs> Amen. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If you have love.
of one to another. Amen. All of y'all. Yes, by our love. Come on. All right. If this is the final question, you get this right, we have to give it all to you. I seen some answers I didn't know. All right. <laughs> but if you get this one, we'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. All right. True or false. Come on. You got to pick the right one. <laughs> Everything God has written in his word is his commandment. Is that true? Or is that false? Everything God has written in his word is his commandment. True or false? Ah, hmm. uh, what answers do we have? Come on, church. Come on, church. All right, all right. I see one answer. Uh-huh. Can I get a backup answer? <laughs> <laughs> Everything God has written in his word is his commandment. All right. The majority is saying true. Praise God. Give yourselves a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Who said you can't have a good time in church? Amen. Amen. Bible study and Bible reviews. Amen. It just, uh, it's just good, 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 good. All right. So tonight. Uh, we are moving forward in uh, the five secrets of living. And so tonight we're moving forward. We already did. The secret to living is fruit bearing. The secret of fruit bearing is abiding. The next one is the secret of abiding is obeying. Tonight, I want to share with you with the next few minutes is the secret uh, of obeying is loving. Come on, type that in. The secret of obeying is loving. Amen. And so, well, Pastor John, why are these lessons so necessary? Because each and every one of us who are born again, who is connected to the vine, our heart's desire is should we should want a vibrant, a live, a, a healthy relationship with our Lord and Savior. Amen. So that we can begin to live on the abundant side of life. We're just not trying to make it. We want to be fully plugged in and connected so that his life can flow into us. Hallelujah. Amen. And we can experience abundant life. Amen. Amen. How many can testify I'm connected to the vine? The vine is Christ Jesus. Don't We cannot live a holy and righteous life disconnected from the vine. Amen. It is through Jesus Christ who supplies all the nourishments, all the power, everything we need to bear fruit, watch this, and to live a productive life a fruitful and a fulfilled life. How many says, well, count me in. I want to live a productive life. I want to be fruitful. I want to be the one bearing fruit. Amen. So God can get the glory out of my life. I want to live a life for Feel. I don't want to get in my rocking chair after all the years have passed and can't be, be fulfilled thinking about God used me for this. God allowed me to go through God and God brought me out. God, but I just, all I did all the, all the, all these years just sit in church. I didn't help nobody. I wasn't trying to be a part of it. No, that's not the testimony, amen, we want. We want the, uh, a vibrant re relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we last shared with you the secret of abiding is obeying. Amen. I, I, when I was uh, uh, getting the lesson together, I just, all these scriptures just came at me came, you know, it was coming in my mind, my spirit, and so like, I remember when Jesus asked the question, he was talking to his disciples in Luke 6 and 46. I remember him and he says, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Y'all remember that scripture, Luke 6 and 46? 
when Jesus had called his disciples together before his departure, he was giving them nuggets of truth. This is how you're going to live when I return. I mean, yeah, return back to my father. You're going to have to uh, know these things. So put them in your heart. Live them out. He says, how are you going to be able to call me Lord, Lord? I'm your master. I'm your, your, your leader. And you're not doing anything I'm saying. We have people in the church today and saying, I love the Lord and he's my savior. But they are not obeying the word of God. Uh, so it's not lining up with the word. So we ask the question. How can you be a disciple and not obey? Well, that's, that's, that's a question that you have to answer, amen, concerning your relationship with Christ because he's telling us uh, the way that we are connected and, and building upon this relationship and not just being religious. We must obey him, amen. We learn to abide in him through our obedience to him. Oh, somebody write it. Amen. We learn to abide in him uh, through our obedience to him. Amen. And his, his command, which is his word. Amen. That's why, my sisters and brothers, we must stay in the word. That's how we find out his commands is through his word. Amen. And so I'm excited tonight because it's opening our, if we had gotten off track, if we have gotten complacent, he says, get back in my word. Amen. The secret of abiding is obeying the word. So we must say, yes, Lord, I will obey. Is there one witness tonight listening? Say, Lord, I will obey. Hallelujah. Because he's our everything and he commands us to obey him. Not only that, he deserves total obedience. Lord, after all that you've done for me, you gave your son Jesus Christ who died in my, my spot, my place. The least I can do. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The least we can do. Uh, is obey his word, his command. And it, I, I get it. It may be a struggle for some believers. Why? Because our earthly, our fleshly nature, amen, wants to do things our own way. And, and, and how many know sometimes our way, all the time, yes. our way, amen, is not in line with what God amen. desires for our life. Can I tell you the truth? Amen. Amen. And so we must be willing to lay our desires aside and pick up his will, his desires. And we find that out through his commands, his commandment, his word. And we just seen in the uh, Bible study review that his word is his command. Amen. And the more we, we apply it in our life, we are... Uh, abiding in him through our obedience. Woo! You got to get this tonight because here's the gist of it. The more we obey God, the more we are established and settled in his love. That's, that's the whole key. If you miss that, you miss the gist of the lesson. The more we obey God, the more we are established in his love and uh, settled in his love. But, but watch this. Obedience is a choice. Yes, every day we're, we're filled with making decisions and, and we know rules, we know policies. Y'all know this, amen. And so every day you and I have to make a conscious decision. Will I obey the rule or, or, or policy or the commands or am I going to do it my way? You can ask Judas how doing it his way, uh, how did it turn out for him? 
not so great. Amen. And so we we do, we choose, we get to choose. Am I going to obey what God says uh, through the working? And, and the good news is we don't even have to do it in our own strength. We can allow the working and the wooing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he is like, uh -uh, don't do that. Don't don't go that way. How many times we, we ignore that warning from the Holy Spirit and go ahead and do what we want to do anyway? Uh, and, you know, to live this God kind of life, God has provided everything. If we just learn how to recognize the Holy Spirit, recognize when he's speaking, he's leading us in God. Because you know he's a counselor. You know he's an instructor. You know he's a teacher. Hallelujah. And he's our helper. When we have having trouble uh, yielding to and obey, obeying the commandment of God. Amen. But it's through the Holy Spirit. Well, what, what, the, what did the Holy Spirit do, Pastor John? Well, I'm glad you <laughs> asked. Woo. Anybody getting happy beside me? Amen. The Holy Spirit reveals the will of God to us. He shows us who Christ is. Amen. And we respond in obedience. <laughs> Did you know that? It's through the Holy Spirit who reveals the will of God. I don't know if you have experienced this lately. When there's a decision to make, there, and, and maybe you, you've been uh, dealing with it internally, spiritually, and you're like, God, I need help. Help me make the right decision. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will begin to minister. And if you open the Bible, sometimes you'll open up right to a scripture where it just answers right there. You'll have a conversation with somebody, and you're like, I've just been dealing with that. How, and I don't know, but when that happens to me, tears come in my eyes, and I was like, God, you love me so much. God, even the minute things, the things we, we don't share with others, God is saying, if you just trust me, if you just yield to the wooing and working, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He, he's not going to force it down, but you got to be open to receive whatever he's saying, his wisdom, his knowledge, and receive the power. Because how can we live this life without the Spirit? It is through that connection. Somebody type in, I'm connected. This is more than just attending church. I'm not... It's good. People do that all the time. I'm coming to church, but they're not connected to the church. Oh, I'm preaching Sunday's message already. Amen. We, we say we believers, but there's no divine connection. And if we are the branches, which the Bible says we are, if we're not connected, what does the Bible say we're good for? It's not that Christ will throw us away, but we will be unproductive in life. We will be unfruitful and unfulfilled. You may have all degrees that's available out there, but without Christ, you are unproductive. You can have all the money, but without Christ, you're not fruitful. Amen. It's only in him. What the scriptures say, in him we live we move, and what's the last one? Have our being. We have our being. Do I have some saved folks listening to me tonight? <laughs> Amen. And so, as we as we abide in Him, Amen. Uh, which is which is meaning I'm rooted in Him. I'm permanently permanently established in Him. That's settled. I'm not going nowhere. Hallelujah. I don't care what the world does. I'm not losing my salvation following the world. Can somebody say Amen? Amen. Amen. And so when we talk about following him, we're rooted in him, uh, established in him. And amen. And so he in turns, he in turns, uh, give us the life nourishments that we need. Hallelujah. Not only are we uh, staying connected, but he's staying connected to us. Amen. And while we're uh, permanently established in him, amen. 
man, he is constantly and continuously exerting his power. You got to get this in us and through us. Woo! But you got to be connected. Woo! He's the power. He is the power sword. Plug into him and stay connected because, my God, the more we stay rooted and grounded in Christ. Listen, if you're confessing healing today, don't change that confession tomorrow. Stay rooted and grounded. Don't let society or our culture cause you to be wishy-washy about your salvation. Amen. If you stay permanently established in him, him. That's when he's able. Oh, I see my son. I see my daughter. And I'm going to continue to uh, let power flow in them. The, my love, because God is love. Yes. Amen. And so, as the branch is connected to the vine, mm -hmm. the power flows to us and through us. Somebody said, Let it flow now. Let it flow. Let it flow. And so, with this happening, God's love in us that comes in our heart, comes in our spirit, it allows us to obey his word. Oh, God, hallelujah. And we learn to apply it to our lives. Are y'all getting this tonight? Yes. The secret of obeying is loving. Hallelujah. I'm so glad Jesus didn't give let us try to figure this out on our own. Oh, <laughs> what does it take to fully obey him? Because people will have lip service. They say stuff you want to hear in a heartbeat. Can I get a witness? witness. And Jesus, I, I, I don't want lip service. <laughs> I want your heart involved in this. Yes. Amen. And so when we really learn what it takes, how many really love the Lord? Now, here's another question, the same type of question, but let me put it this way. How many of you are in love with the Lord? Oh, yes. Come on now. Amen. And so, our lesson tonight, John 15 and 10, it says, when you obey me, Jesus is speaking, you are living in my love. Do you see that? You got to type this in tonight. Come on. You got to study this out this week. When Jesus is saying, St. John 15 and 10 from the, the Living Bible, when you obey me, you are living in my love. Come on, somebody. You got to type that in for yourself. I'm living in his love because I obey him. Hallelujah. When you obey me, Jesus is talking. It's in red. You are living in my love. You know, when uh, just studying this further, some people are, are they serving God out of a, a type of fear that, oh Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get judged and the Lord is waiting to punish me and I'm trying to escape hell. Who wants a relationship like that? Now, I know Christ doesn't want that. <laughs> Jesus, he, uh, no, no, he doesn't want that kind of relationship. No, don't serve him out of that kind of fear. No, 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 no. That's not the healthy type of relationship uh, that we're talking about. Now, here's another one. Uh, it's not the type of obedience that we uh, obey him out of our own selfish needs, our selfishness. I will obey God only because I fear going to heaven, I mean, going to hell, or uh, if I obey him, I get this, I get that, you know, for our own selfishness. That's not the type of relationship uh, of obedience that Jesus is talking about. Hallelujah. Put your personal agenda, so put all of that, that stuff on the altar. No, I'm, I'm obeying Christ. Why? Because I love him. I'm obeying him because he has commanded me to love him. Mm -hmm. And if he's my master, he's my Lord, he's my savior, and I'm his disciple, I am committed to do what my master, my Lord, my savior has commanded me to do. Mm -hmm. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the type of uh, uh, 
relationship that Jesus wants. He wants a heart, a heartfelt a relationship. Y'all know uh, the different type of relationships we get in with one another. Some people are dear to your heart and others are like, uh, <laughs> Y'all, you yeah, see, yes, y'all got some friends that, that y'all call friends uh, years ago. They said, no, they not really a friend. They associates. Y'all y'all say that. And nobody admit that on, on in the uh, Instagram things or <laughs> live stream. But we stopped calling them friends and started calling them associates. Acquaintances, yeah, I know them, but I, uh -uh, we ain't got, see, friends, watch this, friends have something in common that they build upon. Mm -hmm. You know your friend, uh-huh, uh -huh. you have something that you can build a, uh, upon, and over the years, it gets, it gets more intense, it gets deeper, it gets rooted. Ah, uh, we've been, how many have said this about a true friend? We've been through the thick and the what? Then. Then, come on, somebody. <laughs> and so you, and we even got the nerve, you know me. You know what we've been through. How can, how would you think I did this? Because, listen, some, some people are in our lives for a season. And so that season of friendship, it don't last long. But somebody who, you, get, you don't even have to be in the same state to have some long-lasting friendships. You know why? Because that, that relationship has turned into a friendship. Hallelujah. And we want to be friends of God. Yes. Amen. I will obey you, amen, because I love you. But listen, no matter, see, don't change your love stance for Christ because you're going through some difficult times. Love ought to remain the same in your friendship when you're in the, in the pit and when you get to the palace. Come on, somebody. Whatever the outcome, a true friend will not leave you. Right. No matter what, even if you're wrong, a friend will say, you know, you my, you my friend. We've been together, but you're not right. <laughs> I'm going to stick with you because I what? I love, love you. you. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... We pray, we pray tonight that you're grasping this, that you will, uh, we sometimes we say, I fell in love with, but I'm saying, fall, fall, don't fall, do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall in love. Just be in love. Get in love. Amen. And stay in love with Jesus Christ. Can somebody type in for pastor, I will obey. Woo! I will obey. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen. Throughout the word of God, God has always desired his people to obey him out of love. All the other people, the heathens and pagans are different. No, but God's people, he says, I expect you to love me. Because I am a good God. And when we look in Deuteronomy uh, 10, verses 12 and 13, let me read it in your hearing. It says, And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee mm -hmm. but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways? Are you hearing obedience? And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all of thine heart and with all of thy soul. Here's verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Way back in the Bible times, God was looking for love and obedience from his people. But when we get mixed up with worldliness, when we, oh my God, then that's when we forget the blessings of the Lord and we walk in cursing. Y'all, y'all know that in Deuteronomy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But I came to tell you tonight that the highest uh, level of obedience, you got to get this, is love. The highest level of obedience is love. Hallelujah. The more we love him, watch this, 
the more we will obey him. Did y'all get that? Mm -hmm. The more we love him, the more we will obey him. Now, why is that so important? Because when you really are in a, a true, healthy relationship, you don't want to do anything to offend or to 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 come in in the midst of that that solid relationship. Am I right? Husbands and wives, somebody talk to me now. <laughs> Amen. When you're in that 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 relationship and you're fully invested, fully connected, you don't want to do anything that will offend your your loved one. Right. So if we have that kind of mindset in the natural, how much more uh, can we allow the Holy Spirit so that we can have that same mindset? Because I love my God. I am in love with my Lord and my Savior. I don't want to do anything in disobedience that would that would he would not agree with that would bring shame on the name of Jesus and looking uh, uh, don't aren't you a Christian aren't you a disciple and you're doing this the Bible says you don't want nobody talking like that but as much as life within us that we obey the word, and then here comes the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He says, "I, if you just listen to me, Amen. I will be your helper, Amen. amen. And so we 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 know the God kind of love supersedes all other. Is there anybody listening tonight that is familiar, understands the God kind of love? Because the Bible does speak of four types of love. So listen, Bible studies uh, scholars, you, you Bible study scholars, you got to help me out tonight. Based on what you know about the Word of God, what are, type it, type your answers in, what are the four types of love the Bible talks about? Do you know what are the four types of love that the Bible talks about? We're going to give you five seconds, ten seconds. Mm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. What do you know? Amen. Type them in quick as you can. What are the four types of love that the Bible talks about? All right. I see Sister Pastor Siobhan. She got three of them. All right. Come on now. All right. I see you, Sister uh, Lucretia. Come on. Is there one more? What, what are the four types of love that the Bible talks about? Is there another? Come on, Sister Jackie, I got you. Well, let me help you out. <laughs> Amen. The first type of love, the storge, S-T-O-R-G-E, storge love. This type of love is the family kind of love. Amen. It's the family kind of love between a husband, wife, a mom, and a dad, a cousin, and an uncle. <laughs> family love. You know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> and, all right, well, let me give you something from the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Naomi and Ruth. Yes. Yeah, Naomi okay. and Ruth. That's a family. Storche love. Come on, somebody. That's number one. Don't y'all forget the four types of love. I'm going to go through them real quick. All right. This love, ooh, you got to get this, should be forever. Y'all, that family love, uh -oh. we got to love family, right? <laughs> but it's not without, it, it, it is, let me see, let me see. This love should be forever and without conditions, but oftentimes it's not. We allow things to come in, disagreements, yeah. misunderstandings, and, and there goes that relationship. It's not our fault. Can I tell you the truth? <laughs> there are conditions attached to every relationship. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. There are conditions attached to every relationship, even in our families. How many are not speaking to a sister or a brother uh, that are blood relatives because of a, a falling out? Amen. So that that's not the relationship that we talk about tonight. All right, let's keep moving. I'm not going to meddle. All right, so we talk about the store shade love. Let's talk about the phileo, P-H-I-L-E-O, phileo love. 
This type of love is a friendship love. We just talked about a family love. And now we're talking about a friendship love. Mm. Y'all remember Jonathan and David in the Bible? They, they were friends. The Bible says that a friend, watch this, loveth, loves at all times. Uh, yeah, but how many know sometimes we don't always choose to love? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and most of us can testify we've lost a friend or two along this life's journey for whatever the reason. We'll leave that between you and God. <laughs> But that's phileo love, a friendship love. And this type of re love relationship, guess what? It's conditional as well. Mm -hmm. Come on now. All right. Ooh, are y'all getting this? Mm -hmm. All right. So we had the storche love, the phileo love, and here's another one, the eros love. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Pastor John, what is eros? Amen. This is the central feeling kind of love. Now watch this. So this is a type of love. Yes, yeah, sensual uh, feeling kind of love. This type of love should only be experienced between husband and a wife. And a wife. Uh -huh. Somebody say amen. amen. It's the kind of love that a husband and a wife exhibit toward each other. But we know the world has distorted all that amen and uh, erotic love and that God has, you know, intended for us through uh, perversion and all kinds of sex. And y'all know all these gender things going on. That's that's not God. Not at all. Amen. So the Eros love is, that's E-R-O-S. It's central, uh, a feeling kind of love. So we got the Storche, the Phileo, the Eros love. And here, amen. Um, let me tell you about the eros love. Mm -hmm. It's it's also conditional. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it can be self-serving, self-pleasure. Oh, Come on, uh huh. So you don't you don't rely on that one. Uh huh. <laughs> it's conditional. Come on, somebody. But we oh here's the last one. All right, y'all y'all still with me? I ain't lose nobody, did I? All right, here's here's the fourth one. The agape love. I seen many answers. People say, yeah, I know this. This is the love that true believers display. It is the faith kind of love. And oftentimes you were here in the church, it is the God kind of love. Woo, the agape love. How many can say, thank God for the agape love of God? Yes. This type of love, Pastor Shabbat, is so powerful, it causes us to love our enemies. Ooh, Woo -hoo, come on. Hallelujah. This type of love, the agape love of God, causes us to endure when our flesh wants to give up. It causes, despite conditions, oh, it's so powerful. It is there, it's unconditional. Write that down. Agape love is unconditional. And it's not reliant on the behavior of others. You can treat me whatever kind of way, uh, you know what I'm saying. It's not going to change the agape love in my heart. Woo! Does anybody understand what agape love mm -hmm. is? Hallelujah. Uh, so when we are connected to the vine, my sisters and my brother, it is the agape love that flows through us to us and through us. Ooh, I'm so glad to be connected. I'm a branch. I'm flourishing. I'm prospering. I'm being productive. I'm being fruitful and fulfilled because the agape love is in me. Come on, somebody. Woo! Hallelujah. Uh, don't try to experience the agape, the agape love and you disconnect it. Uh-uh. Got to get connected first. Amen. Uh, it's unconditional, and we don't even have to manufacture. This ain't manufacturing. You can't go duplicate this in Walmart and, and Kmart. No, 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 no. It ain't on the shelf like that. <laughs> Woo, God is love. Amen. The good thing in my sisters and brothers, 
agape love is given to us freely by Jesus Christ. There are some good benefits associated with being a born-again believer. Amen. And fully connected to God. Amen. And obeying his word. He made it so plain tonight. He says, if you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love. Hallelujah. You can't get, it can't get any plainer Amen. than that. Mm -hmm. How many would say, Lord, help me to live in your love? Is there one person tonight that said, Lord, I, I just want to live in your love. I don't want to try to be like nobody else. I want to be the best disciple. I want to be obedient disciple living in your love. But listen, it gets, it gets, here's a stipulation. He's, Jesus starts that sentence, says, if, type in the word if. Yeah. Uh-oh, here, here we go. If ye keep my commandment. <laughs> That's a rhetorical uh, uh, way of putting it, statement. That means he, he is, when Jesus put that out to his disciples and to us, he said he wants to influence our thought our, mm -hmm. and our conduct. He wants it. You got to get this in order to live it out. If you do this, then you will. You yeah. shall. Y'all remember we had a couple of lessons. You ought to put some shells in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you keep my commandment, you shall abide. Woohoo! <laughs> Amen. If you Keep my commandment. You will live in my love. Now, how much plainer can that be? Hallelujah. And so, if you love me, uh, and what he's actually saying, since you love me, uh -huh. or because, of your, because you love me, keep my commandments. That's all I'm asking. If you're going to be my disciple because you love me and since you love me, just do what I ask you. Do what I command of you. Hallelujah. And our relationship will grow. It will flourish. It will mature. Oh, how many want to mature in Christ tonight? Hallelujah. That maturity comes through our obedience. The more you obey, the more love. Ooh, come on. Hallelujah. You may start it off as a novice, but now you're an expert. Oh, I know what God said. I, I, I'm a, I'm a baby what he says. Because, listen, we living in a time now where there's coming across the pulpit all kinds of counterfeit. And they watering down. They change. They trying to change the true meaning of the word. And you got to know it for yourself. And when you begin to mature in God's agape love, woo, nothing can move you. You'll be able to detect a counterfeit from a mile away. Amen. And so tonight, the secret of obeying is loving. Do you love Christ tonight? Mm -hmm. Amen. He says, if you love me or since you love me or because you love me, keep my commandment. And, and it's through the agape love. It's his love that allows us to love him even the more and to obey him. Hallelujah. We will keep his commandment. And watch this. His commandments, when we love him right, his commandments or his word will not be grievous. Wow. It won't be difficult. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Here we go. You telling me to obey those that have rule over you. Oh, Lord. You get, you'll be so far past that. Amen. And you're like, if Jesus said it, amen and hallelujah. Lord, teach me how to apply it to my life and I'm about done. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so since we love him, look, we should have no problem obeying him. That's right. Amen. And so again in St. John 15 and 10 from the Living Bible says, "When you obey me, you are living in my love, just as I obey my Father and live in his love." So when we do a, a, a summary of the more we love him, the more we will obey him. The more we obey him, the more we will abide in him. 
The more we abide in him, the more we will bear fruit. And the more we bear fruit, Pastor Siobhan, the more we will truly experience the secret of living. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many want to live your best life with Christ? In Christ. Yeah. Uh, so when we obey him, we're living in his love. Amen. And so tonight, I just pray this lesson uh, has been a blessing where we can evaluate our own obedience level. Our, watch this. Not only our obedience level, but our love level in Christ. Yes. Got to get past the storche, the phileo, the eros love, and get to God's agape love, the God kind of love. And when that love begin to flow through our, we as branches, we'll, we won't have problems loving our sisters and brothers. We'll be able to live out St. John 13, 35. By this, all men will know that ye are my disciples, because you love one to another. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God, because we are excited. Oh God, oh Father, that you are speaking to us, that God, that we can apply your word to our lives and be the better for it. God, we want uh, your love flowing through us. God, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, we want to walk in total obedience, God, because, Father, we know partial obedience is total disobedience, oh God. And, Father, we want the relationship where nothing is, is broken, nothing that we're doing in the flesh rim that is hindering our relationship and our friendship. Friendship, oh God. And Father, not only for ourselves, but we lift up our sisters and brothers in Christ, oh God. God, that we will get to a maturity level in you that obeying your word is not, not even a problem. Not If you said it, we say yes and amen. And Father, those who are yet struggling, God, God, I pray now, oh God, that we would uh, cover them, God, that they would be fully connected to you, oh God, so they can reach that level of total obedience. Father, we pray for those that don't know you, that are lost in darkness, that they will get to know you in a very real way. And Father, we thank you as we go the rest of the week. Father, let your love flow in and through our lives so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. I thank God for each and every one of you who stayed with us, joined us. And amen, that you God, were able to be empowered tonight as you go the rest of the week. Watch this. God is going to bless your socks off. Amen. I believe it with all of my heart because he's that kind of God. Amen. And so uh, don't forget our announcements. Govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. And so we'll see you sun Saturday at intercessory prayer. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead and do our benediction. Now may the grace of God, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost Rest, rule, and abide with you all, both now and forever. Amen and amen. We love you. Have a blessed rest of the week. Go and sin no more.